Welcome uh, everyone to this uh, special Share and Learn session on the joy of stopping to notice. And um, last week we celebrated our 400th online meetup that we've done for carers since the start of the pandemic. Um, and it's always nice to do something a bit different. We've, we've run sessions on, on many different uh, topics over the last uh, couple of years. So lots of well-being sessions, sessions on um, developing your skills, sessions with um, our helpline advisors, and uh, some sessions just to sit back and enjoy music and uh, listen to authors. Um, but this one's a little different, and we're, and we're really delighted this afternoon to be joined by author and performer Miranda Keeling, who's been observing everyday life in the areas where she's lived for the past 10 years. And these observations were collected in a lovely book, which I, I have a copy of here, um, called The Year I Stopped to Notice, which is a, a, a really lovely book full of uh, lots of um, observations, but really, uh, really nice uh, illustrations uh, in there as well. And I just wanted to uh, read out a couple of um, quotes from the cover for you, actually. So uh, the first quote is from Philip Pullman, who said, this book is a delight. And the other quote is from uh, Neil Gaiman, who says, an odd, beautiful book, buy an extra copy to give to someone you know. Um, but the, the good news is you don't have to uh, buy a copy. If you'd like a copy of Miranda's book, um, please just do let us know by emailing membership at carersuk.org. And we'll, uh, um, if you send, if you provide your address as well, we'll send you a, a free copy. Um, so we're very, very happy to do that, which we we've, we usually do when we have a, a guest author uh, coming to uh, to join us. Um, so as well as reading from the book, Miranda will be uh, leading a short exercise on mindful writing as well, and just helping us all to uh, to find a calm space amid uh, our busy lives. So Miranda, welcome! Really uh, great to welcome you to Carers UK Hi. for our. Um, one of our online meetups and uh, over to you. Thank you. So yeah, hi, my name is Miranda Keeling and I am a writer and a performer and the author of the book, The Year I Stopped to Notice, which I think you've just been shown the cover of already, but there it is again. So yeah, as a writer, I, I record all of the tiny moments that are happening all around me. You know, everywhere I go, I notice kind of snippets of conversation, images and atmosphere. And I've been noticing things like that since I was small. I remember when I was about um, seven, being fascinated by the formations of air bubbles in this ice cube that was in my drink. And I remember a grown up nearby saying, you would notice that. <laughs> and um, I don't know if that was a compliment. You know, I can have a tendency to get kind of lost in the details and I guess when you're a child everybody wants you to be kind of listening and paying attention right to the things that they think are important but now I'm older I realize that um I do it I notice these things because it helps me to feel present if you're anything like me um the world can feel overwhelming you know the big picture can be really intense and it can be really useful to look for moments of stillness just to find those little everyday things that happen and to focus in on them. So very early on, I started writing things down that I noticed as a kind of diary. And then I went off to art college and in my twenties, I started sketching things that I saw on kind of tubes and buses and cafes. But sketches don't capture the other senses because I was trying to work out why didn't I just keep sketching? And I think, you know, when you, when you sketch something you're not capturing kind of what it felt like and what it smelt like and you know the feel of a wooden chair or this the feeling of rain on your on your skin or something so in the end I went back to writing and it wasn't a diary anymore it was um it was just these sort of little poems or tiny stories about what was happening around me moments like these a woman in a blue polka dot dress with a white belt holds a bunch of red roses as she waits for a coffee in a sunlit cafe in Hackney. A man taking a break from some sort of conference in Aldwych stands looking at the rain. A name tag on his suit jacket says, unknown. 
Little girl on the bus. Nice notebook. Me. Thanks. Her. Is it a diary? Me. I write about things I see. Her. Like me. Me. Exactly. Her. Cool. In 2013, I began posting my observations online and I put them on Twitter. Um, it was just somewhere to put them. I wasn't on social media at the time. I didn't have a Facebook account or anything. Um, and I'd heard about Twitter and I just had a look at it. So I started putting them on there. And the first one that I posted back in 2013 was sitting in my quiet nighttime garden by the softly soothing glow of my little solar lamp. Lovely. You know, and I got a few responses to it. Not very many because I didn't really have any followers. It was just my friends on there, really. But I kept posting them. More and more of them anyway. Observations like these. An elderly man in a blue suit dances slowly round an empty cafe. On noticing me come in, he looks up, smiles and carries on. Man on the tube. I'm tired. His wife. Oh, we're all tired. Brian. And, you know, slowly people have started to read them and respond to them with kind of how they make them feel. Um, and now I've got thousands of people who read these tiny pieces that I post almost every day. And they use them to remind themselves of what's around them, to feel more connected with places they used to live or, or with places that they've never been. Sometimes my observations get used in educational settings. So English teachers have told me that they use them to get their students thinking about story um, and drama teachers use them to start scenes. And I think that all of this is because each moment that I record, it, it's kind of a few seconds of time, like a, like a photo. Um, and it suggests what might have become, what might have come before and also kind of what might come after, but without us knowing for sure. I'll give you an example of some of the snapshot type ones. A man stands outside a front door in Hackney. He minutely adjusts his hair. He lifts up a bunch of flowers. He inhales. He rings the bell. A woman in a green beret stands in a pub garden surrounded by laughing people as she stares quietly into the glass of wine in her hand. You know, or they touch on topics that people want to explore or to share their experiences of woman at a bus stop I was giving my autistic sister interview practice and I said why do you want this job and she said I don't I just need the money I love her I, I wish we were allowed to say these things and this one got a lot of discussion going woman on the bus what blusher do you uh woman on the bus what blusher do you use her friend oh cold air, a brisk walk alcohol or sometimes the menopause you so my pieces almost always start out on paper I observe something, a woman in a purple hat in a supermarket, and I make a note of it in one of my notebooks. I'm gonna share with you a few photos of them. Um, you see that, my a notebook. And so that's how they start out, very neat. And then, you know, as I, um, as I get them in and out of my pockets, kind of in the rain and stuff, they get much more, um, used looking. Anyway, a good few years ago, when I'd only just started sharing these online, I posted this one. A woman on the tube, her beautiful silver hair cascading in waves over her vivid red cape, nods to herself as she reads a book about tigers. And an artist, Welbeck Kane, who I didn't know, sent me this drawing of it. Um, and not because, you know, I was paying him or I'd asked him to or I had any followers because I didn't at that point. He just wanted to respond to what I'd written. And, you know, it's not what she looked like, but she's wonderful and it's kind of the essence of her. And over the years, I've been sent hundreds of these drawings of my observations and none of the artists knew that anyone else was doing it. They just wanted to react to what I've written. So here are a few more. A woman on the tube in a mint green jumper drinks a massive cup of coffee, the expression on her bird-like face of waiting for it to kick in. And what's lovely is that, you know, I've said bird-like face and she's just drawn her as full bird lady, which is fantastic. A woman in a silk shirt printed with a pattern of knives and forks arranges a long blonde wig on a man in a brightly lit chip shop, badly. A little boy walks through East London with his mum. Boy, as if suddenly realising, we're both together, mum smiling. Yes, we are. 
And there is something lovely in this, you know, that what I see prompts me to write it down and then I share it and then artists read it and it prompts them to draw something in response. And you could look at one of their illustrations and observe the details a bit and then maybe write something else from there. And I kind of wonder where this exercise would end up, you know, how different from the original moment and what essence would, would remain. Anyway, so in January last year, which is sort of like over 10 years since I first started doing all this, I was contacted by Kira Jameson from Icon Books and she wanted to know if I thought my observations would make a book. And I did. And in fact, I was brimming over with ideas about how to make one. And we spent a while kind of back and forth with ideas, trying to decide which direction to take all this material in. Cause I had about, yeah, I had over 40,000 of them by this point. Um, and so I downloaded all of them, my archive, and I began to read through them all and it took weeks um, and themes started to appear, kind of connections, things that I'd observed many times, um, cats, dogs, pigeons, children, interactions between strangers, things left behind on the pavement, that kind of thing. And eventually what kept coming up was the seasons. So from the clothes people were wearing and what they were talking about, and the weather, I realized how much each piece had a sense of the time of year. I've got some here. Man in Finsbury Park. How was the New Year's Eve party? Woman, I fell in love with a man with a sequined beard. A little girl walks through Green Park carrying a hot waffle with chocolate sauce that her dad has just bought her. She blows on it to cool it down and her breath makes clouds of icy white in the cold air. Woman on the bus, I love this time of year. You can legitimately eat three hot cross buns for breakfast. People move slowly through the city heat. A storm is coming. So we decided that the book would be set over a year, but taken from all the years that I've been observing. So now I have to go through all the entries from each month over 10 years to try and find the best ones for the book. Um, here's some pictures of my process. You can see how. was so you can see it's back to paper I can't think when I work solely on a screen I need to hold the paper I need to find which words my eyes are drawn to and I need to move those pieces of paper around like a jigsaw to see where they fit and I decided to call the book at this point the year I stopped to notice and in the meantime we were trying to decide who should do the illustrations the publisher had some illustrators in mind but I was keen to use one of the artists that had been sending me their work for free because it felt right to honor a collaboration that was already in place. And, you know, I love what they do. So I showed them nine options uh, of artists and they, cho they chose Lucy Power. And I, I think her work is perfect for the book. She's got a, a really amazing eye for detail and depth. And there's so much to notice in what she does. Um, a hairdresser in Islington washes the hair of a client. as She stares out of the salon window, shampoo foaming up her arms like the encroaching tide beautiful one and she's added all these details like the crab on the window and a dog runs full pelt into the sea near Whitstable as a seagull gently floats towards the shore. Skeins of wool lie like pastries in a shop window in Hackney and this is one of my favourite ones. Two men sit outside a cafe in the dark, the last of the autumn leaves swirling around them, they're playing chess one man rests his head in his palm and the other reaches for a piece. So people are always trying to work out what it is that I write. You know, is it haiku? No, not quite. Although I'm hugely inspired by haiku. Are they poems at all? Uh, Michael and I were just talking about this. Are they poems or are they tiny stories or travel writing or a type of mindfulness practice? And I think they're somewhere in between poetry and prose most of the time, some leaning more towards one or the other. But because they're so small, they lend themselves to being expanded on. Um, but I want them to exist in their own right, you know. So after this next section, um, I'm going to lead you through a writing exercise using techniques that help to find those little moments in life that are worth noticing. So I think that's over to you, is it, Michael? Or am I leading this reflection? <laughs> I'm not sure. 
Does anyone have any questions? Sorry, Miranda. Yeah, oh. sorry, Miranda. I was just I was just typing in the chat, <laughs> uh, responding to something. Ah. Um, great. That was lovely. Thank you, Miranda, for sharing uh, those extracts uh, from the book. And yes, really, yeah, really, really enjoyed them. And um, yes, I, I think as we were saying before, it's and, and even more so just hearing you read them. Of some of them do read like uh, short poems and I'm, I'm reminded of um, I don't know if you know the poet William Carlos Williams American poet who wrote these very short poems that are just quite intriguing and uh, and you kind of you know if you read them a few times you realize you know even though they appear very simple there's more more to them and uh, and, and your mind gets working on them and thinking you oh, know what's behind that and why why did they say that so I would like to do a writing exercise with you now it's not a requirement that you are a writer of any kind. <laughs> um, it's just to play really. And it stays in here, like Michael says, it doesn't, it's not, none of this is gonna go anywhere else. So my observations that I write tend to be, they're really short. I'll show you, you know, how they look. Can you see that, all right. They're really kind of small. Um, they're about 10 to 50 words long each. <clears throat> and that's, partly because I started using Twitter to share them and Twitter has this character limit. So you can't go longer than um, a certain number of words. And when I started, it was very short. And I find limits really, really useful when I'm writing because um, it just helps me to focus on what I'm doing. So in a moment, I'm gonna give you a couple of minutes to look around the space that you're in. And when you're looking at it, I want you to find something to observe about it. And that could be, anything at all. So use the senses that you have available to you. Um, what can you see? What can you hear? What can you taste? What can you touch? You know, if you're partially sighted or if you've got any other sense di um, differences, then you just use what's available for you. And I'm gonna set this timer for two minutes. And in that time, I want you to settle on what you're observing. So like, I've got a blind that's kind of halfway down my window there, two thirds down my window. Um, there might be a sound outside, there was just some bird song out there, or the way the light hits your desk, right? And I want you to jot down, has everybody got a pen and paper or has anybody not got a pen and paper? Okay. So yeah, I want you to jot down um, some words about what you're seeing and just literally single words like table, green, messy, sound, sunshine. Right, so it's not a finished piece. It doesn't need to sound nice. It's a shopping list, sort of. And write about things that you'd be happy to share with the group. That's the first thing. Okay, does anyone have any questions before I set the timer for two minutes? Let's see if I can see everyone. My gallery view is not showing everyone. Michael, can you see anyone hand up that they don't, that they have a question? Sorry, I'll, I'll take you off spotlight again, uh, Miranda, so you can see everyone. Great, so it looks like we're ready to go. So just some words that occur to you when you look at your surroundings and you sense them, that's it. So I'm just gonna set the timer for two minutes and then I'll say stop. Okay, one second. That's 20 minutes, that's way too long. Here we go, go. So now you have your notes your words. So now I'm going to give you five minutes to turn these into an observation. And you can write one long-ish, well, short, short-ish piece, <laughs> or two or three if you like. And each one should be no longer than 50 words. So really quite short. And when I say turn them into observations, I just mean something that isn't note form anymore. It doesn't have to be, you know, a short story, um, something fancy, a poem. It's just a collection of sentences that work together based on what you've observed. So it can be really simple like this one. Um, my cat sits beside me on the arm of the sofa. Her tortoiseshell colors are beautiful against the green fabric. Her feet are disappeared under her for warmth. She's not a lap cat. This is her version of a hug. That was something I observed recently. And depending on how your brain works, you might want to spend time crafting one observation to be exactly the way you want it, or you might want to just see what comes out of your 
brain on the spot and I work in both ways and I think there's a benefit to both approaches. So I'm going to set the timer for five minutes so that you don't overthink it. And at the end, you should have either one or a few small moments just described. If you find at the end that you have extra time and you're just sitting there, you know, just, just try and make one final little collection of words, one final short sentence with that time. Um, okay, so does anyone have any questions or need anything before we start this one? Can't see anyone. Okay, great. I'm going to start my timer. Uh, go. A door opens onto a dark alley and a man in chef's white steps out, does a series of rather elaborate yoga poses and then heads back in. And that's Lucy's drawing of painting of him. <laughs> um, a man sits on the tube. He is very still. His rucksack is printed with comic book attack sounds like boom, crash, kapow and blam. A little girl carefully hands imaginary things to her mum who receives them respectfully, mindful of their fragility. A woman has a floral handbag in the shape of a coffin. She opens and closes it repeatedly, enjoying the feel of its kiss clasp. I remember chatting with my editor about kiss, kiss clasps, and what they sound like and look like. A man on the train sighs as having meticulously arranged his lunch on his little fold down table, the woman from the window seat beside him needs the loo. Graffiti on a cafe toilet door, I love you. And then underneath, not you, Holly. <laughs> um, a man on the train, it's that White House, the one I see when we're nearing Cambridge. I feel as if I've lived there, but of course I haven't. And then one of these lovely um, paintings that Lucy does of the different months in the book. Man in a cobbled courtyard to three pigeons. What, you don't want to talk to me today? A woman in Brighton insists her husband brings his phone on his selfie stick into the sea. He is not the most relaxed person in the water. Man on his phone in Hackney. It's one of them things, bruv. People just got to live with sadness sometimes. It's okay to watch TV until the world's clear. You'll be out the other side soon. Man in a gallery observing a security guard. The trouble with modern art is, I don't even know if that's a real man on an actual chair. Man in a cafe in Durham, what can I get you? His friend, a coffee, man, a fancy one. His friend, just a cappuccino, man, nods, a fancy one. As the door of this cafe opens, a breeze swirls in, rifles through every page of my notebook as if looking for something and then leaves again. Man on a tube station lift. Have you, oh, yeah, we haven't done this one. Man in a tube station lift. Have you thought about New Year's Eve yet? Woman, no, Sanjay, give me a moment to get my head around October. A man sighs as he turns the key in the ignition of his knackered old van, on the side of which is written, as good as it gets. If <laughs> you can see that. Let's just do a couple more. As a festive decoration, a man in Camden has decided to tie an enormous red bow around his front door and is now struggling to shut it. A man on the tube recognises the kind-faced woman with white hair opposite him as his teacher from school and reintroduces himself after 25 years. A woman sits on the bus. Her phone rings. The ringtone is the Doctor Who theme tune. A little girl nearby nods her approval. Through the misty morning bus window, the colours of the city melt into each other like spots of ink dropped close together onto damp cloth. 